And tonight on our Great Great American panel, he ran for Congress in Colorado's 7th Congressional District and is the President and CEO of Western Skies Forum. Ryan Frazier is back with us. He, a Fox News medical contributor, the author of the brand new book, by the way, great book, got it tonight, The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and Health. Our friend Dr. Mark Siegel is back, and she, a syndica syndicated, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and the host of America's Morning Show, Quinn and Rose. Rose Tennant is here. Good to see all of you. Thanks. Good to see by the way, thank you. The book is, because you and I have just, we're, we're talking about this, fantastic and uh, great health ideas. You include spirituality. Very and, important. Yeah. Not just cookie cutter, yeah. but spirituality tied in with physicality. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, speaking of medicine, I never thought I'd bring this up on a show. Can you imagine the mother of an eight-year-old daughter, if this is a pageant mother, giving her eight-year-old daughter Botox? Watch the video. I do it, but... Um, it hurts sometimes, but I get used to it. I do it right here. A little bit of And what do you do it for? Um, I don't know. Well, do you do it because you see wrinkles? Or? Oh, yeah. Um, um, I see, like, wrinkles, and, um, it just, like, I just, like, don't, like, think wrinkles are nice for little girls. They were just telling me about the lines on her face and how, you know, a lot of the moms there, they're giving their kids Botox, and it's pretty much like the thing. I'm not the only one that does it. This is nuts. Oh, nuts. my goodness. I felt like I was going to throw up when I read the news story. I couldn't even believe it was real. It, it, it's unbelievable. The, in the story I read, it, they talked about the, the mother had said that the daughter wanted to do it. Oh, she said, I, 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 I don't want to do it. The, my daughter, her, uh, her daughter was the one who wanted to try Botox. Oh, and I thought, it. you know what? My daughter wants to run around with scissors in her hand. Look, Should I let look, her do that, too? Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Eight years old. This is a form of child abuse. This is going to have severe psych psychological scars on this child later on with identity issues. And not only that, yeah. there's medical risks of Botox. Yeah. You can actually paralyze parts of the face with this. There's complications here. The woman should be considered possibly by, to lose custody. Way, can I just say something? And I don't want women that get Botox to be offended. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look real. Nobody, you know, it is, if, the, if the men in your life don't love you the way you are, don't stay with them. Well, it just doesn't, make, it makes no sense. For an eight-year-old, none for a pageant, and I think this is just an unfortunate case of a mom who wants to be a friend instead of a parent. That's a great and, point. Uh, it's a really Good unfortunate point. reality. All right, moving on to presidential politics. Uh, Newt was here yesterday. We just, uh, yeah. I right. like Newt Gingrich. I like Newt Gingrich. Yeah, I, really I like do. all the candidates. I really, I think we've, I think I'm tired of this. This is JV. Nobody can beat Obama. Baloney. I don't believe that. Sometimes I think Mickey Mouse could beat Obama. Really, <laughs> I do. But we do need a strong candidate. Who do you like so far? Who well, you, you know, it's hard to say because you know that um, I'm friends with Rick Santorum, and I right. think he is, talk about a genuine, honest man, that's yep. who Rick Santorum is. Uh, additionally, Herman Cain, in my opinion, is every man, woman's man, because he came from adversity, he came from humble beginnings, and yet look at him now. That is the American dream. He lived it, he made a success out of the American dream, and I love Herman Cain for many, many reasons. But uh, uh, I'd like to like. talk about I was, was going to say, say something very positive about Gingrich. He got slammed by the left today about his health care issues, but he actually started the, the, the Center for Health Transformation, and he's about privatizing mm -hmm. the system. It, he's been totally misrepresented here, right. but Romney has a a big problem here. He tried to distance himself from, from Obamacare today. I'm not buying it. Massachusetts is in big trouble because of Romney care. And the problem with it is you can't get in to see a doctor. There's huge waits. Doctors are running away. Only half the doctors in the states of Massachusetts are actually seeing new patients. I'm just They're excited like that this field is finally starting to take shape. And uh, the reality is that this election is going to come down to being about the direction of the country and who yeah. gives the people the confidence that they can get the job done. All right, guys, we've got to take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll continue. I'm going to talk about Newt. I'm going to talk about my Botox. <laughs> I need Botox, you thank God. Great, or with our great, great American <laughs> panel as we uh, continue tonight on Hannity. And we continue now with our great American panel. All right, so Newt was here last night. Mitt Romney gives a speech on health care. Mitch Daniels sitting on the fence. Governor Palin, we don't know if she's going to get in. Huckabee, we don't know yet. Uh, Palenti's in. Santorum's in. Yeah. We have our two libertarians in. Uh, Michelle Bachman may get in. Right, right. What do you like? If, give me your top three. Well, listen, I just want to say something. I'm Newt Gingrich, okay? I'm so tired of every time you hear somebody say something about Newt, it's Newt, the man who has too much luggage, 
Gingrich, why, I mean, why do we always say that about him? Who doesn't have luggage? Everybody has luggage. And last night on your show, he said he made mistakes, and he's grown from them. You've got to give him that. I mean, we all make mistakes. And additionally, when I look at Obama, he has more luggage than, than U.S. Airways on any given day at the airport. <laughs> you know, okay? I like Daniels. I, I don't know how far he's going to go, but he's fiscally sound. He stood up against the unions five years ago. He's a very impressive candidate. Like Huckabee, right? Huckabee, by the way, has told me that he stopped listening. When the phone rings and he's, it's Fox News, he does not pick up the phone because you know, he's afraid he's going to be, you know, if he officially announces, he's going to be a problem here. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see who really emerges here. You know, who really gets out there and connects with the people, talks about the issues they care about. In my in my town, in my city, in Aurora. I, I talk to a lot of folks, and I can tell you, they're really concerned about the direction of the country, about the direction of our economy, and whether there's going to be a candidate that really gets out there and talks about those issues in a no, way. Uh, this this goes to, what, and I'll ask all you what you think about Donald Trump, but I think it's what I've been saying. Mark Stein said it very well tonight. The reason people like Trump is because he fights and he swings and he doesn't take any crap. Can you and, say you know, kick ass on the on this yeah, show? Yeah, I, okay, because I, I think they know well, that he would it. kick some yes. butt on this. Yeah, but <laughs> that's true. They, I, I, I think honestly, that's what they that's want. True. They that's want a I strong want. man. I want somebody that's going to fight. I'm yeah. tired of you know, people. You know what they want, Sean? They want someone who's going to call it like it is, who's going to tell them the truth, and no. who's going to put forth a concrete direction for the country. He makes a great point, Trump, when he talks about how we're hemorrhaging all this money to foreign countries that we don't get back. You know, we get we go to Iraq. It's a little Right. Controversial, but he's saying we repair Iraq. We don't. We don't get repaid by oil. That's a very, very strong point. I have said this for years. You know, you think of all the natural resources they have. How about a million dollars to every family that lost a loved one or any soldier that was, you know, permanently disabled in that wow. war for their liberation? Same thing goes with Kuwait. Now, I'm not saying I don't think we should take their oil, but they should pay for their own liberation. Certainly, right? Especially Absolutely. with a fiscal crisis we Absolutely. have. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We all agree on that. All right. Um, now, there was a would-be flag burner at LSU uh, just a day ago, and uh, all of a sudden, well, he didn't actually get to burn the flag because the students, um, anyway, the guy had to be escorted away in a cop car for safety reasons. Large crowd following him. A thousand students showed up chanting, USA, USA, USA. Now, usually it's the conservative in the cop car that's being taken <laughs> off for, because he's about to offer conservative views. I think this is a pretty cool movement. You know, give the liberals a piece of their own medicine. Absolutely. You know, this guy, they're saying he may have the right or freedom to burn the flag. I think it's great that these people have the same right or freedom to express their displeasure and disappointment with this act. You know, uh, so many folks have fought for the rights and the freedoms in this country. The last thing we want to see is people burning our flags. Free speech one, goes one both ways, here. right? I, com I completely agree with that. I would add, the university doesn't have to tolerate this. They can actually expel someone for burning a flag. They'll never, so, not a well, you can have a constitutional right, but it doesn't mean a university has That's to true. ordain it. Yeah, I, I think it is our our holy rep honor of those men and women that gave their life. Absolutely. I think and so, and I think more and more people believe that way, and I think there's a hope for a future when you see young people at the university like that, you know, responding in that way, and free speech goes both ways. You know, one of the things I think will be a big topic is American exceptionalism. I think it's going to be a lot bigger in this election than you anything else. Is. All right, guys, hey, good to see you. And by the way, the uh, Inner Pulse. This is uh, Dr. Siegel's new book. You want to get it in bookstores everywhere. And coming up, our exclusive investigation into the link between the drug cartels fighting on the Mexican border and Islamic terror groups. This special report on Hannity coming up next. A shooting in the Arizona desert recently left one man dead and another seriously wounded. It is part of a disturbing trend. Pinal County, Arizona begins 70 miles from Mexico, and yet it is ground zero for the smuggling wars inside the U.S. And along with the constant stream of drugs and illegal aliens pouring through the county comes a violent new trend, confrontations with heavily armed cartel members known as RIP crews. The difference between everyday average border bandit and a RIP crew is the level of sophistication. They'll pull over cars that they believe are carrying drugs and then they'll proceed to just rob the drugs from those people and that tends to be a violent act and they don't have any problem assaulting people, they don't have any problem shooting people. It is no longer the case where they can continue just to, to lose marijuana loads or lose alien loads because it is really cutting into their profit margin. And so what they're willing to do now is expend a lot of time, energy and money to protect that. They have found greater profit 
in attacking their own competition in those lonely remote canyons in the dark of night, stealing the drugs. Anybody that comes in their way is likely to be murdered or killed. For smugglers, crossing the Arizona border is just the beginning. They must then move their load through 100 miles of rough American terrain to get to the interstate highways where it can be transported throughout the United States. All of that area is just wide open, and that area is where we have the bandits, it's where we have the drug cartels, the alien smuggling cartels. And it is where dead bodies are increasingly turning up, like this one found recently on top of his fully loaded AK-47. As the sun sets over Arizona's Sonoran Desert, the peaceful scenery can be very deceiving. With the darkness comes the nightly cat and mouse game between the drug cartels and American law enforcement. So night after night, sheriff's deputies quietly slip into the rugged landscape, hoping to intercept the smugglers. It doesn't take long to find some. Okay, Jim, we're looking at two trucks. What we just had was uh, two trucks um, believed to be loaded probably with narcotics. So they both had rifles and bulletproof vests. The smugglers ditch one stolen truck but managed to escape into the desert in another. No dope. So we were off the nose of the truck and you could see the vest <clears throat> and you could see the stock of a rifle coming up off their shoulder. And as soon as we started moving, that's when they jumped in the truck. A few miles away, a deputy spots another suspicious vehicle. He saw this vehicle coming out of an area that's a known route for drugs. And I mean, it's obvious what's in here. These are all bundles of marijuana. It looks like it's about 300 pounds of marijuana. This is a typical way you'll find it with the, uh, the black wrap around. It is not long before yet another stolen truck is seen speeding through the pitch black desert. Yeah, you got one coming in on you. Black Ten four silver dodge. It's probably about a quarter mile ahead of McGinnis. Did it hit the spikes yet? When they came through, they hit the spikes, and obviously they you can see the flat tires, and they fed through the desert. Oh, AK. They uh, deployed spikes on the vehicle, and once they became disabled and the occupants bailed out, they left behind at least one of their weapons, an AK-47. You don't carry this because you're going hunting or you're just out for a leisurely drive. That's to either engage law enforcement or to protect their load from bandits. RIP crews, DTOs, the drug trafficking organizations, this is your typical weapon. AK-47 is what they love. It is the same type of weapon Brian Terry faced as he tracked a RIP crew through the Arizona desert last December. He was deployed in an interdiction team specifically to go after RIP crews, uh, who they knew were armed with sophisticated weaponry, AK-47s, FNFALs, automatic weapons, and take them on and take back America's turf. Agent Terry died after being hit by an AK-47 round in the lower back. One of the techniques that they use is violence. Violence against other groups, and in particular, violence against Border Patrol agents. Okay. But there's another danger that comes with the cartels operating on American soil, one that U.S. government officials are often reluctant to talk about. The line between cartel violence and terrorism is blurring, and there is growing evidence of the cartels aligning themselves with terror groups. There's still people that wake up every day and think about nothing else but to do harm to this country. There were 445,000 illegal entries across our southern border in the fiscal year 2010. About 45,000 are immigrants coming from countries other than Mexico, including at least four state sponsors of uh, terrorism. The issues of narco-trafficking and uh, the prevalence of the drug cartels in, in Mexico is a um, a matter of national security interest. It's a porous border, basically, and we have a free flow of bodies coming through 
and the terrorists know this. They can blend into those groups and get into our country. It is a national security concern because if you can move drugs, if you can move people, you can move other things. Last year, Border Patrol agents arrested nearly 700 people from, quote, special interest countries, places like Iran, Syria, Afghanistan, and Yemen. And earlier this year, suspicions were raised when agents found controversial imam Saeed Jaziri being smuggled into San Diego in the trunk of a car. But it is a less obvious threat that keeps intelligence officials up at night. We have been aware for quite some time that Hezbollah is in Venezuela uh, and in, you know, South America. They've operated there freely. They're the state arm of Iran. And they are literally using the same trafficker routes, the same transportation routes that the drug cartels do. Thousands of illegal immigrants constantly stream up through Mexico from South America, which is home to the little known but very dangerous tri-border region, where Paraguay, Brazil, and Argentina all meet. It is predominantly a Latino community, but about 50 years ago, tens of thousands of persons from Syria, Lebanon, and other Middle East Eastern countries left the Middle East and relocated themselves in this tri-borders area. There have been known links to terrorist organizations such as Hamas, such as Hezbollah, and they raise about $10 billion in illicit monies through drug trafficking. Now much of that money goes back to the Mideast to support terrorism. And it is in this lawless region where the cartel and terror nexus flourishes. 18 of 44 international terrorist groups have been linked to some aspect of the international drug trade. A DEA report presented to Congress last year acknowledged that, quote, several drug trafficking organizations are exporting cocaine from South America with proceeds entering the coffers of Islamic radical groups such as Hezbollah and Hamas in Europe and the Middle East. Transnational drug trafficking threatens the security of Americans at home and abroad. What does this mean to us to have a source of Spanish-speaking, South American-born, Islamic potential terrorists? Hezbollah is a terrorist organization, well-financed, well-funded, and uh, they're operating freely throughout that area. And their agents learn Spanish, blend in, get false documents, and come across our border. And they become one of the other ultimate sleepers that we fear here in America because they mix into the culture of illegal aliens and they wait for that proverbial call. So while politicians argue just how secure our borders are, the threat remains real. And for the men and women on the front lines, you check for guns or anything right here in the seat. The job never ends. And our thoughts and prayers are with the families of two Yuma Sector Border Patrol agents killed this morning in the line of duty. We want to thank them for their service, their sacrifice to our country. That is all the time we have left this evening. As always, thank you for being with us. Have a great night.